Hey everyone, Vanessa here. I'm here to do my second YouTube video. I promised some of you that I would show you how to do the tilting teapot card that I created and posted to Instagram and Facebook. So I have everything die cut and colored and ready to go. Um, quickly, I'll go over what supplies I used. Um, so first, the stamps that I used is from the Stamps of Life. It's T for two and more T for us. They coordinate together. And they also have um, dies. There's more than two, but um, these are the two that I use for this card, the teapot and the cute little cup. I also used a scallop border die, which is a Sizzix Stephanie Bernard set. Um, there's several different ones in there. This is actually a retired set, so once it's gone, it's gone. I did look this morning, and um, the Stamps of Life website actually still has some available, so if you're interested in those, um, you can go get those now. And I also used this um, stitched rectangle border. I think it's a set of seven, but it's also um, from the Stamps of Life, and I use this on a lot of my cards, so if you follow me, you'll you'll recognize it because I use it a lot, probably on practically every card. So that's that. Um, it's really actually a quick and easy card um, to put together, and die cutting makes that all really super easy and fast. So once you have the card base, which is just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that I cut in half and folded it. So that's easy. I cut the stitched border on this cute little um, pattern paper, which of course is by the Stamps of Life. Um, sorry, I'm a design team member and I'm a huge fan obviously of the Stamps of Life Stephanie Bernard. So I have lots of um, her amazing products. So uh, once you cut that, that's gonna go on your card front. And it is also pop dot because you're going to want space um, so that your teapots can rock, which I will get to that soon, but that's that. Then I also cut another piece of pattern paper with that stitched border because I wanted it to um, be on the bottom and the edge, and then I just cut it to the size that I needed. Um, with my paper trimmer, so that was easy too. So for the teapot, I stamped and die cut and colored, and I um, glued a strip of paper on the back, and it just needed to be wide enough to hold a penny, because the penny is the weight to hold it down and get the rocking motion. So I like to use the glossy accents glue um, when I need something to be um, held on really well. So that was done already. And for the penny though, um, I used score tape. So I, I purposely stamped flowers on this teapot because I wanted the bread to go in and just be a flower center and still be cute. But you can use you know, whatever you want if there's a brad. Um, for example, when I did the sailboat one, there's a brad in the middle, but it kind of went with the little windows, so it doesn't look too out of place. So once you get the strip of piece of paper down, you need to place it where you want it on your card front. And so I decided that I wanted it about there. So it's still within the rectangle. And then I punched a hole with my crocodile. Oops, wrong side. Through the middle. And then you also need to make a hole on your background paper. Now, unfortunately, my crocodile doesn't reach. 
Um, I do have other tools that I could use, like anywhere hole punch and stuff, but I'm just too lazy. So I am just going to use my paper piercer. But again, after I punched my hole, I lined it back up and then I marked where I want that hole to be. So I'm just going to punch the hole and then I'm really going to twist it around because it needs you need to be able to have the brad move around freely. So this isn't really the most ideal way to do it, but it works. So So then once you have that hole, you're going to attach the teapot to the card. Flip it over. Now, the important part here is that you don't want to fasten the brad down like you normally would a brad, because then it's going to be tight to your paper and then your teapot's not gonna move. So um, a suggestion on May Make Made It Crafts, which was the original video that I watched on how to do my sailboat card, she recommended to um, use your paper piercer or um, like a stylus, something that to just fold the brad down over it so that it's not tight. And that was a great suggestion, because then that's not tight. So now that might be a little bit more tight, tighter than I want it there. So now it tilts. See how easy that is? Then you put pop, dot, pop dots on the back. So that's going to, um, so you'll be able to um, attach it to the card base and have room for it to move. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off and stick it on. And I can't mess up my video now because I'm taking off the sticky stuff and I can't start over. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. And then you'll notice that I also have um, some dimensional tape. I just used this um, dimensional tape and cut little squares. And these are going to keep your uh, whatever you're creating, but in this case, the teapot, because I only want it to tip that far. And then I don't want it to tip too far back. So this is going to keep it within the tilting range that I want and keep and keep the, um, the layer on there so it's not sticky. You just want the dimension. Then after that, this cute little border that I um, die cut and then cut and then I put the border on. This is also pop dotted because we don't want, and it's, and it's important to note it's thicker than the other, the other dimensional tape. So it needs to be a little bit thicker than that. So it can all go over smoothly and then there's no it's not catching on anything, so that's really easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. Okay. And then when the card was tilting, you could kind of see the little piece of paper and that was bothering me. So that's when I decided to put a teacup there. So that was easy. Oh no. Okay, yay, it's nobody. Um, 
So I use score tape on here and just going to place it, let it tilt up so I can see exactly and then lay it down. So now you don't even see that piece of paper. Oops. Oh, and very important, the little sentiment that I stamped on here, stamp it before you attach it to your card. Um, I do this on a lot of cards. Sometimes it's an afterthought. Sometimes I just forget. Um, but if you're, because this is pop dotted and not all of it's pop dotted, if you try to stamp, if I tried to stamp that on here now, um, I probably would get a, not a good image. Like some of it would stamp and some of it wouldn't. So always stamp and then put put it on your card. And then I added another cup for it to pour into. Let's tip it down. And that looks about right. Yes, yes, good. And then one more cup. Now the other one I did add some dimension to it, but um, it's not really that important. And I just slid it under. And that is it. Extremely easy, right? Um, so now you, I, I'm going to go create a bunch of other tilting cards. I'm not sure what. Anything in water can tilt, right? Um, there's a Stamps of Life Hedgehog. He's on his back. I think that would be really cute to like rock back and forth. Um, yeah, I don't know. So um, hopefully this wasn't too horrible to watch. I'm not good at this, um, but hopefully I'll get better. Um, I started and stopped about 8 million times. Um, I'm also sick, so my voice is a little extra um, scratchy. But um, there you go. I hope um, I explained that well enough. But if you have any questions, um, post in the comments. Or if you follow me, post to Instagram or Facebook. Um, and I'll answer any of those questions for you. And if you create a tilting card, I would love to see it. So again, tag me, Instagram, Facebook, leave me a comment. Um, I'll stop by your blog if you have one too. So um, thank you. Um, bye.